All the trouble that Trump has been through, this fake trouble, the legal cases, we know there's been a platinum lining around it all. It made him, essentially, it helped make him the nominee. I mean, he probably wouldn't have locked it up as quickly had it not been for this. It backfired on the Democrats, but that doesn't mean it won't work a little bit to their advantage, at least right now, it seems to be. I'm sorry, I hate this, but Joe Biden gets to go to the critical swing state of Pennsylvania today and talk about his Scranton roots and middle class this and Trump is that while Donald Trump is in court. That's a problem. Donald Trump is tied up and this is part of the plan that, you know, up until now it's been a day in court here or a hearing there, but uh, this is... This is going to last for a couple of weeks, and I don't like it. This is cheating. This is cheating. Kind of like a football team arranging for the team in the other district to be locked up in detention whenever it was time to practice. Or maybe Olympic athletes, they get their nutrition clean and very, very rich in nutrients and all that stuff. Imagine if the competition could only go to the candy store. Look. <laughs> It's cheating right now what we're seeing um, in this campaign, in this election. Joe Biden has rigged it so Donald Trump is in court while he gets to go to uh, critical swing states. I don't like it. It's fascinating. You know, certain people in the conservative world are noticing and are outraged, but everybody else, this is just great. This is, this is democracy. Today on Inside Politics, the people of the state of New York versus Donald J. Trump. Right now, the former president is sitting in a court as a criminal defendant, keeping an eye on the prospective jurors who could make him a convicted felon. While Trump is in court, Biden is, quote, running the country. Today, he heads to his hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania, to channel his working class roots and talk about taxes in the middle class. Oh, isn't that nice? Running the country while lying about his background, <laughs> pretending he's somebody else. Um, this is having an effect, and I don't like it. How many days between now and the election? Not as many as you might think, 202 days. This trial is scheduled to go on for how long? Six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. That means uh, 42 to 56 days, 20% of the rest of the campaign. Donald Trump is supposed to be in court unless he's going to be arrested. He knows this is a problem. He has a way of turning things around, right? He does and he does, but it is an issue. I should be right now in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in many other states, North Carolina, Georgia, campaigning. This is all coming from the Biden White House because the guy can't put two sentences together. He can't campaign. They're using this in order to try and win an election. And it's not working that way. It's working the opposite way. So check that out. Legal expense. It's called legal expense. That's what you're supposed to call it. More on the legal expenses in a moment. But yeah, right? He's not where he should be. And even here in New York, it's funny that he picked New York County. That's Manhattan. This is the one county that Donald Trump lost to another Republican, actually. John Kasich, remember that guy? Back in 2016, in the primary, lost to John Kasich. Another thing that's going on, there are major issues, of course, right, confronting this country. Uh, crime, the border, other things. That's all for the media and a lot of other people. To the side, don't worry about it, because... We have juror number four to worry about. Did they fill out the questionnaire? What did they say? How did Donald Trump look at the person? That kind of important stuff. All the pretrial motions happening in court, whether it was about recusal or sanctions for violating the gag order, allegedly. Now we're in the thick of jury selection. The goal here is to ultimately seat a jury of 12 you see what I mean? six alternates. We're not going to debate whether there's a two-tiered system. He's getting all Trump. Nothing about treatment. crime. We know, Evan, that there are no cameras in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. But all he's Alvin the Bragg outside. He is posting on social media all day, every day while he's in the courtroom. Oh, they don't want that either. You're the first juror of the morning to be asked that 42 question questionnaire is currently Israel's under assault. And we're worried about juror questionnaires. Nearly two thirds of that first batch of 96 individuals. And Joe uh, Biden is off the jurors. hook in all of this stuff. All of it. And let's talk about the, uh, the essence of the case. Donald Trump writes a check. Can I see the check? Okay. What's the problem? He wrote a check to his then lawyer, Michael Cohen, for $35,000.
I got one right here. What's the problem? A check from a client to his lawyer. Now, I have another check. Uh, Joe Biden, he received a check from his brother for $200,000. Which one is more worthy of investigation? Oh, Joe Biden, middle-class Joe, getting $200,000 from his brother who's doing business all over the world, or a wealthy man, Donald Trump, writing his own lawyer a $35,000 check. Which one causes the indictment, right? What a corrupt system. And do me a favor, Joe, if he ever brags about Scranton and lies about it too, you know, he talks about Scranton like it's some sort of hellhole. I've been there. It's a totally fine community. Um, but he is telling a tall tale about himself. I grew up in Scranton. This is the house I was raised in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where I come from in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Look, I see it differently. I don't look at the economy through the eyes of Wall Street or Park Avenue. I look at through the eyes of the people I grew up with in Scranton and Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, he was in Scranton today and gets to brag about Scranton. But Joe didn't spend all that much time in Scranton. He left Scranton. And he lived in some other places, some very nice places, like one of the most affluent communities in America. We settled in Garden City. Yes, Garden City on Long Island, known as the jewel of Long Island. Take a look at it. It has, I think, only four golf courses and six country clubs, something crazy like that. Joe lived there. And why was he there? Because his father, the guy Joe keeps telling us was like chronically unemployed, no. His father bought an airport. His father bought an airport on, did your father buy an airport? <laughs> did my? He also went, not to PS92 or some public school, he went to Archmere Academy. Did you go to Archmere Academy? I didn't go to Archmere Academy. That's a fancy private school. But it plays well in the sticks, Joe thinks, right? That he's some sort of hard scrabble guy. Joe also, when he was growing up, received a new car every single year during high school. I shared a used car with a friend. Listen to this, riding around in the Chevy that Joe Sr. gave him for a present. Joe told his pals he always had a new car in high school, brand new Chrysler 300. Whenever he had a date or something, you know, his dad ran the dealership, the largest dealership in all of Delaware. Joe was so down on his luck, and so was the old man that uh, gifted his son a Corvette. <laughs> that was a fancy car in the 1960s. It still is today. And Joe has that car. All right. It's all uh, a mythology uh, con job that Joe uh, grew up down on his luck. All right. Back to the trial today, if we don't mind. What was the big scandal so far? Did Donald Trump nod off for a moment? Good for him. These things are boring. It was extremely routine and boring, so much so that, you know, it's been re reported that uh, the former president fell asleep in court. It looked like Donald Trump nodded off. Uh, his head was nodding, the jaw a little bit slack there. Without knowing his REM state, it's, he was seen with his eyes closed for significant periods of time, minutes at a time. Uh, people do that in court. People do that when they're waiting at the DMV. That's okay. I will say they didn't say it. Critically, it was just a matter of fact, but it did get more attention than when Joe Biden nodded off at the G7 in front of world leaders. He falls asleep at a very serious symposium about global warming, and that gets a pass somehow. All right, uh, what else happened today? Oh, Judge Mershon is the totally conflicted partisan judge. No excuse in the world for this guy to not recuse himself with the situation with his daughter and his own political uh, uh, contributions. He doesn't like people talking in his courtroom. I don't like the way he talked to President Trump. Listen to this. Uh, he warns Trump's lawyer, your client was uttering something in the direction of the juror. I won't tolerate that. Okay. What next? I will not have any jurors intimidated in this courtroom. I want to make that crystal clear. Take a minute with your client. Intimidated how? He was talking to the lawyer sitting next to him. This is, they're enjoying it, right? I mean, this may blow up, so they gotta take, they gotta take a little pleasure in this from time to time. Um, going forward, 
I don't think we should do this anymore. Do you? All rise. Superior Court for the County Atlanta Judicial Circuit is now in session. The Honorable Judge Scott McAfee is presiding. Go and knock on the order. Thank you all. Please be seated. Why do we stand up when the judge walks in the room? I don't stand up when the congressman walks in the room. I mean, what's so special about judges? The judicial branch, the executive branch, the congressional branch? It doesn't make any sense. And this Judge Mershon has disgraced himself and the judiciary, and the whole damn system. Judge Mershon, you did this, okay? Thank God for Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a great guy. The richest man in the world happens to be a civil libertarian. He doesn't like any of this, and he's not afraid to say it. I guess it's not that hard for him. He's the richest man in the world, but the case is obviously a corruption of the law, lawfare. And you know who noticed? President Trump. President Trump retruthed it, and I think that's great. So here we are. One of the most popular people in American history is locked up in court for the next six to eight weeks. Didn't the current president say he would do everything he could to bring this country together? This is one of the most divisive things that could ever happen to a country. What about this, this solemn promise? Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together uniting our people, uniting our nation. Big words, huh? What did he say? What, what, what does that mean? Maybe he has no soul. His whole soul was in it. He hasn't lifted a finger to unite this country. It really does. I wonder, does this man have a soul? You know, if he really cared about democracy and all these judges and prosecutors, maybe they'd make an appointment to see Chuck Schumer. This is a man who's violated federal law, and he did it with a million witnesses. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you. That's threatening. That's against the law. And of course, some maniac showed up at Judge Kavanaugh's house with a bag full of guns. But he's a Democrat. He gets immunity. It's wrong. Everybody knows it. Even they know it. Um, what's going to happen? I don't know. But I sense it's going to be glorious. I'll be right back.